What's going on everyone? This is Capital Combat. The name says it all. I'm Rod Drell. And uh, this quick counter, and it might not be that quick, but this discussion is going to be about Manny Pacquiao. We know Pac-Man is ready to fight again. He's making his comeback or uh, coming back off his break since the um, Timothy Brad since the fight between him and Timothy Bradley. He's won his Senate seat and he's willing to return um, on November 5th. Um, but he's without an opponent. And this is interesting because right now boxing is looking for the next pay-per-view star. Mayweather is not there. That leaves Manny Pacquiao, that leaves Miguel Cotto, and that leaves Canelo Alvarez. Miguel Cotto, I can't really see him fighting that often. And he won't be in the sport too much longer, if, um, I think. Uh, Canelo Alvarez has pretty much made himself the pay-per-view guy um, with his knockout of Khan, with him fighting Mayweather. And, you know, he still he still um, just has the one blemish on his record against Floyd Mayweather Jr. That leaves Manny Pacquiao. Um, and I'm doing this after the uh, Crawford fight. Crawford uh, beat um, Victor Postal to, get the, uh, to be the king at 140 pounds. Congratulations to him. Um... But now, again, what boxing needs, they need the young upcoming or young star that they can put on pay-per-view. We know that it's Canelo right now. Uh, again, Cotto's on his way out. Pacquiao is on his last leg. Mayweather's gone. Um, they've been kind of testing the waters. Uh, last night, the fight between Postal and Crawford was a pay-per-view. Um, I don't know the numbers on that yet. They haven't released them. But if you want, if my opinion, it was forty forty nine ninety nine, um, and fifty nine ninety nine for HD. I think they could have put the pay per view money less, depending on how much they were guaranteeing each fighter. If I'm not mistaken, Crawford got one point three million, and Postal got, um, I think it was a sixty forty split, or seventy thirty. I think his was like um, six six hundred seventy five thousand. It was both their highest uh, to date. So we know that Manny Pacquiao is going to bring a lot of money. He's the name, um, and they just need a dance partner. We don't want to see uh, another Marquez fight. We don't want to see another Bradley fight. Those are done and over with. Move those to the side. Keep it at that. So who do we put Manny Pacquiao in there with? Well, Aram, they recently tried to have um, make the Manny Pacquiao-Adrian Broner fight. Now, Broner... Um, and for whatever re and from what it seemed like, Aram and Heyman worked together. And this is the thing about these promotional companies. I know they want to keep it in house and make the money, but to make the most money, they've got to reach out to other fighters um, for that. So they have to reach out to PBC. They have to reach out to Golden Boy. They have to reach out to K2. Uh, they got to reach out to Eddie Hearn to get those fighters in the ring because you can't have one guy just against a batch of fighters when you need them against all the fighters in the world and all the best fighters aren't under one umbrella so that didn't come off with adrian broner the way that ha they were going to guarantee him four million and manny pacquiao was getting 20. yeah it's lopsided but manny pacquiao is the name that would have been the best fight both in the ring and outside of it because Adrian Broner can um, can sell the fight. And I guess the risk wasn't worth the reward um, because had he beaten Manny Pacquiao, and I'm going to be honest, I don't think he would have beaten him because he's too stationary. Um, it, had he beaten him, he'd have been the next pay-per-view dude. No one could have been like, like he'd have been pay-per-view. Regardless of any flaws or if you like him or not, he, he doesn't mind playing the villain. He could sell the fight. He would have been the man, but the way it came off, it just, I understand you got to pay these guys their money, but sometimes you have to take that risk to become the man. Right now, Broner is not the man. He could get paid, but $4 million, and then we don't know what the incentives would have been behind the scenes, like the pay-per-view split. Um, what he would have gotten if he got a knockout, if he sold this many tickets and this, or what he's t that kind of thing. So, I think it's a missed opportunity for him. Now they're talking about Danny Garcia. Even better fight. I think that will come off without a hitch. I don't think he would sell the fight, but Freddie Roach and Manny Pac not Manny Pac, yeah, and um Danny Garcia's father would have sold that fight. Um they said 
Bob Aaron said he never talked to Al or anyone. Um, Danny said he turned it down. I think some of those politics and talking to that media kind of got him in trouble, kind of blew that, but it would have it would have been bad but i think right now aram is willing to talk to al Heyman. that might be not good for their money but it's great for us as boxing fans so let's see who we have we got keith thurman um if he's willing to get that turnaround i don't think he'll take four million i don't know what he made from the porter fight or what his highest payday was i really need to look that up but that's a good fight that will make him a pay-per-view star um if he wins and i think he has a better chance to broner to win um, then they're talking about Jesse Vargas. To me, he's he's automatically slated to lose that fight. I think he had a good outing versus uh, Saddam Ali. Um, I think Ali would have taken a fight had he beaten Vargas. Um, but now, Jose Benavidez just won on the undercard of the Terrence Crawford fight. I would actually like to see Benavidez and Vargas get in there and see who knocks out who. Um, Benavidez has stepped up. Um, that would be his best fight to date. Um, I would actually favor Vargas um, right now if they took that fight. But I would prefer to see that than the winner fight Pacquiao. Um, Sean Porter just coming off a loss. It would be a good fight, but I don't think he would sell the fight. I don't think that fight gets made. Errol Spence, still too green. They're still trying to build him up for the future. Lamont Peterson, too inactive. I, I would like to see Peterson in with someone else before they made that fight. Um, yeah, I would like to see him in and be a little bit fresher. At, at this point, you then the fall off in the names. Uh, we had Sammy Vasquez. Had he beat uh, Felix Diaz, he probably would have got the chance. But Felix Diaz came in, did what he had to do, outboxed uh, Vasquez. We have Antonio Orozco again doesn't really have the name they're still building him up i think he'll get a title a true title shot next year um and that's where it falls off um it still have a Khan, but he just got knocked out but he was on a pay-per-view versus canelo alvarez and they're talking all this nonsense with ufc um he would sell the fight i think people would pay to see him get knocked out again but i don't think it happens um unless they just are able to come to some type of agreement. And again, um, you have Frankie Gomez. Again, someone else they're still building up. David Avenisian, um, he beat Shane Mosley. I think he has a fight coming up, or they're trying to make a fight with him. Um, and plus, uh, Spence has Leonard Boondu up next on his slate. So Keith Thurman's free. And we know we can't put him in there with Kell Brook. He's about to fight Triple G, and I doubt he comes back down to welterweight. If anything, he goes to 154. Um, Danny Garcia is free. Amir Khan is... We don't know what that's going on. Sean Porter, we don't really can see that. Errol Spence is fighting Boondu. If he beats Boondu, they might put him in there versus either a Vargas or a, um, a Thurman or even a Pacquiao. Um, and then... You're not going to go with a no name over the, overseas. There is an undefeated dude, uh, Constantine Panamarev, Panamarev, who's 30 and 0. But again, um, no one really knows who he is, cause, so you can't use him. So it's just. It just depends. Um, the biggest names aren't really. I can't see them fighting him right now, and they don't take anyone outside of the top 10 at this point. They're not going to put Rios in there again. So it's just it's just kind of weird. Who do you think they should fight? Do you think he should move up or do you think he should move down? Moving down might be interesting because he can make that fight with Terrence Crawford. Um, since Crawford's on pay-per-view, he won. And this would either prove to see if Terrence Crawford is the true real deal, if he's willing to take that, can take that step up, or if he just is too green to fight Manny Pacquiao. Um, and Manny Pacquiao can still make one 140 let's let's not even he can make 140 he has to eat his way up to 147 even i think his natural weight is probably 140 um and let's take a look at who we have at uh at 140 besides terrence crawford and victor postal because that because that will be a huge payday um 
for them. So at 140, and I'm kind of looking on because my memory is shot. Um, again, we had, you're not going to put him in there with Matisse. He's still coming off a loss, but that's a name recognition, and that will be an all-action fight. So don't rule that one out. Um, we talked about Rosco. The names are very... Well, you know what? John Molina Jr. Even though he's at 140 and he doesn't have that glossy record, he just beat, he just beat Ruslan Provodnikov. So he has that win under his belt. So he has a little bit of heat. Provodnikov is all action dude, but I really can't see him them picking him um, coming off that loss. And at that point, it really, it honestly just really drives down. There's no one else that you could really put in at junior welterweight to compete against against him and that's that's really sad because I, there are some names but I, and they're deep but you you really have a bunch of people that you're waiting to um to take that step up and give me one second because uh, it's a lot of guys that they're building up but you could tell aren't really ready yet um Let's see. Am I missing anyone? We got Postal, Crawford, Matisse. We talked about Antonio Rosco. And these are names. Um, yeah, a, a lot of these guys just aren't aren't ready. I, If not Vargas and they can't get anyone with PBC, the next best name is going to be Molina because Molina is an action guy. Um, he had a good plan versus uh, Provodnikov. Um, you could go with Omar Figueroa Jr. I don't think his name is big enough, but he is, I believe, available. Um, that's really all you have at 140. It's, it's, they have names, but they're not pay-per-view names. At this point, I think you really... It's not much that you can put on there. It's, I'm a little... I'm a little bit taken aback at the uh, at the availability of some of these guys and who you will put in there. Um, it'll be interesting to see who they pick, but I think they pick a good name. I think it's going to end up being Terrence Crawford because Crawford does have the name recognition. He has um, two belts, the WBO and the WBA. He's already been on pay-per-view, and I think he has the um, best chance to win from 140. If I'm anyone at 147, if I'm Broner, I come back and I take that fight. If I'm Danny Garcia, I take that fight. Um, I think you can no negotiate it for anywhere from five to seven million instead of four million. If I'm Garcia, Broner, probably the same thing. But remember, this is this is the point where you got to you have to take that chance and try to you know to be the man. You got to beat the man. And right now, let's look at it. In order for Mayweather to to be that man, guess what he did? He he took out Oscar De La Hoya. Um, Roy Jones beat a bunch. You you got to take. You have to take their spots. And these are the chance for those guys who think they can to take it. Um, that's really all I have. Please let us know who you think they should fight. Um, what's your thoughts on everything. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, tomorrow we should be having our review of the... We should have, we should have our review of the Terrence Crawford, Victor Postal fight. We might um, touch on the Oscar Valdez fight. That was a great fight. Oscar Valdez. I had to... I missed it last night. I watched it this morning. I was very impressed with him. He's he's really going to be going after a lot of guys. Um, Jose Benavidev and the guy last night. He is out of Ukraine, I believe. He is a um, light heavyweight, and I'm going to be covering the light heavyweights later on this week. Um, but check out our review, and then check out our preview for the because there should be one more fight this month. Yeah, on the 29th, we have Adonis Stevenson versus Thomas Williams for the WBC light heavyweight title. Uh, we'll be doing the preview on that. And um, yeah, stay tuned. We'll have all of that for you. Oh, I'm sorry. And Leo Santa Cruz and, uh, versus Carl Frampton fight, which should be a barn burner. If anyone's going to tune in for that, they need to tune in for that. Mikey Garcia versus Elio Rojas and should be a good fight at um 
a junior middleweight with Sergey Rapchenko versus Tony Harrison. Um, we'll have all that for you this week. And until next, guy, next time, guys, peace.